stage, Mr. Tony Chairson! It says the age 34 and a half. Uh, sometimes I need to ask at the start of the show, is there anybody who isn't sure what football manager is? A deathly silence. That's good. It's all right. I like the fact you look round as well to just double check that. Better fucking not be. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, fella. We've got it covered right now. Because uh, it's cool if it's cool if people don't know. Uh, I'm guessing if people do know, give me a cheer then. Hey. Oh, bless. Excellent, lovely stuff. Right, well, this is my, uh, this is my first ever UK tour. This is my first ever Edinburgh show. Mm. And uh, what I had to do was, uh, was I had to try and explain it. Like, to obviously, you know, sometimes you get festival shows and that, there'd be like agents coming or journalists or people just trying to get in and avoid the rain for an hour, right? So they maybe didn't know about football managers. So you had to try and explain it. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to explain football manager to someone who doesn't know a thing about it. Uh, like, I thought I had it fairly straightforward. You know, it's a video game, you play it on your laptop, you're in charge of a football team, what more does need to be said, right? And they'd look at me and just go, all right, okay, well, is it, is it a bit like FIFA? No. Like, it's <laughs> not like FIFA, you know? Because obviously, as you know, you know, FIFA, you control the players, and that's how you generate the results, whereas on Football Manager, everything's all designed for us, and, you know, and what is, oh, like loads of statistics and attributes, and what's, let's face it, it's just a massive fucking spreadsheet, really, isn't it, right? <laughs> I know, it's like 90 seconds into the show, right, and it already sounds nerdy, doesn't it? But, uh, but we're totally fine with that, we're totally fine with that. Like, some days I had one person went, all right, bit nerdy, bit nerdy. Is it a bit like World of Warcraft? And I was like, it's nothing like World of fucking Warcraft! <laughs> Not like those losers sat in our bedrooms for hours, I don't know. <laughs> It's all orcs and axes, but with us it's all sheepskin jackets and left backs. Completely different game. Uh, you know, well, some people were saying, oh, is it a little bit like the fantasy leagues you maybe get at work? And I thought, all oh, right, maybe a little bit like the fantasy leagues, you know, but I don't know about you, I find those a little bit too restrictive personally, you know? With them, all you do is you pick your players and that's about it, right? You know, whereas on Footy Manager, obviously, we've got a lot more to do, to be honest, right? You know, we buy and sell the players, you know, we could do all the contract negotiations. We even do the training schedules, which is fucking weird, right? Given the fact that I've only ever been to a gym once in my life. And... <laughs> Here I am, tasked with coaching elite athletes. It doesn't seem fair somehow, does it? It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. I remember going, I went to this gym once, I got this personal trainer, this fella called Greg. I thought, <laughs> the irony, I'm getting a like, Greg's workout in the gym. And, uh, <laughs> it's almost like you could smell sausage rolls on me or something. And, uh, and he, he gave me this metal bar with these metal wheels on it, barbell, I think he called it later. And he goes, uh, he goes, pick that up. And I'm like, all right, champions, pick it up and that. And he goes, oh, pick it up again. I'm like, all right, champion. And he goes, pick it up again. And I'm like, mate, do you even need this fucking thing or not? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't, just a bell end, you know. Like, you know, because <laughs> you know, apparently, because this is the thing, right? He lied to me. He said, "Oh, go to the gym. That's all about building confidence, right?" Now you know what? I'm quite shallow. You want to build my confidence? See, you like my haircut. Say I've got a nice shirt on. Don't do what this dickhead did and just shout at me for an hour, like you know, by going, "Oh, you're gonna have to warm up. You're doing that wrong. You're gonna pull a muscle." And I'm like, uh, "I've used a water cooler before. I know exactly what I'm doing here." <laughs> Didn't pull my hamstring out for three weeks, orange injured. There you go, there's the, uh, there's the first proper footy manager joke, you know, like, you know, send the physio or specialist, you know, you're not going to do that. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's, you know, so we're there, we are, we're sort of buying players, coaching players, you know, contract negotiations. It's, it's football admin, that's what it is, essentially. It's football admin, right, which is a strange thing, because I'm a comedian, I don't like doing my own admin, yet here I am spending hours and hours and days and days of my life simulating somebody else's administrative duties. And, uh, <laughs> now, I'm gonna speak for myself here, I don't know about yourselves, right, but I don't think I would spend hours and hours and days and days of my life playing a video game called Office Manager if one was out. <laughs> where your main job on Office Manager is to restock staplers and maintain photocopiers and then you have to negotiate Brenda's pay rise because <laughs> yeah, there's been a little news item just turned up on your desk that morning saying she's been making noises about wanting a new challenge. And, uh... <laughs> I 
apparently D.H. Alice sniffing around, you know, so... <laughs> just walk around with a little wanted thing on a name badge there. <laughs> The best we can hope for our office manager is getting a little work experience lad who'd be like a wonder kid. And I mean, like just dub the new Bill Gates. That's about the best we can hope for there. Um, so yeah, so we don't play that, we don't play that. We play this instead, which is probably for the best to be honest. So uh, this show, this is a show that's all about obsession, delusion and general idiocy from a bloke who should know a lot better but clearly doesn't really. Uh, now, some of the questions, there's going to be a lot of questions during the show, um, some of which will be rhetorical, some of which we might be debate as the show goes on. Uh, first question I'm going to pose is, uh, is, is this one, really, is uh, why do a show all about football manager? Now, this was my first ever show that I actually wrote, and um, I spoke to a comedian friend of mine. I said, right, what am I supposed to do my first show about? He said, Tony, you're meant to do something that you feel quite passionate about, right? You know, so that's what you want to do. Feel passionate about it. You'll go on stage. You'll talk about it and entertain away. People will get on board with you. You'll have fun. I thought, brilliant. So I wrapped my brains a little bit, I thought about the only things I know anything about in this world, and it turns out it was beer, dinosaurs, and football manager. So, and you know what, after a bit of research, turns out I knew shit all about dinosaurs. So, <laughs> Jurassic Park, not a documentary apparently, so. So here we are, here we are, football manager, that's what we're doing. Plus, when I first started writing the show, that was the 20th anniversary of the game, and that's when I'd worked out I'd played every single version. That's 20 years, I know. I'm 34 now, that's two-thirds of my life I've played this fucking game, right? And, uh, like, that's longer than I've been sexually active, which, uh, let's face it, if I've played video games for 20 years, the phrase sexually active is not one I get to say out loud very often, so... <laughs> So here I am, I thought, all right, fair enough, 20 years in the game, right? It's become a big part of my life. And, uh, and I've, tried, I've tried to sort of work out, I go around sort of like, you know, various towns and cities and that, doing the show. We did a few warm-up shows before the, fair, before the tour started. Warm-up shows, pre-season friendlies, I called them. Uh, and uh, we, did, we did one in Leicester, right? And I asked the guys, I said, I'll ask you guys for yourselves, like, how long you played the game? Give me a cheer if you've played five years. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, there's one person going, everyone else going, we've all gone, mate. Uh, uh, anyone played ten? Yeah. 15? Yeah. yeah. 20? Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Fair play, lads, for sticking into it, right? I got this one lad in Leicester, goes to him, I goes, how long you played the game? He just looked me straight in the eye and just went, I'm five years clean, mate. I was like, wow! <laughs> That's a side ball right there, and I was not expecting that, you know? I was like, five years clean? Like, because I didn't think you could be addicted to video games. I didn't think that was even a thing, right? But, because, I mean, call me old-fashioned, right? I always associate addiction with, you know, the old things, like drink and drugs and gambling you know, but video games, nah, I haven't none of that, none of that at all, you know, but then again, I suppose if we look at it slightly differently, you know, everyone plays that old bloody candy crush and that on their phones these days, and, you know, when I got my first Game Boy, I was playing Tetris till the Game Boy broke, and university was just a rack of spliffs and four play gold night till the sun came up, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah, one shot golden guns in the facility on it, yeah. <laughs> Halcyon days, halcyon days. Not big headboard, because that was for pricks, wasn't it? We all know that. Uh, so, so maybe, maybe, maybe you can be addicted, right? Maybe you can be addicted, possibly, okay? So I thought, you know what? Maybe I need to work this out, right? Am I? Am I an addict? Or, as I like to think, am I an enthusiast? Now, I think I'm an enthusiast who just can't stop playing. That's where I think I go, right? You know, but... Uh, but it turns out that some of the things I've done because of this game suggest that maybe I'm not an enthusiast at all, suggest that maybe I am, in fact, a massive addict, okay? Now, this is a little test to see if we're going to get on for the next hour and a half of the show, okay, right? If you've done any of these sorts of things that I've done, then we're all going to get along perfectly fine, right? Because footy manager, it brings out, how do we put this, a side to us, right? That, uh, <laughs> that some people outside of this room might think is a little bit strange, okay? Now, uh, I'll give you an example, I'll give you an example, right? Did I once sneak out of a friend's wedding, right, to go... <laughs> yeah. Right, I snuck out of the wedding, right, to go back to the hotel room to load the laptop up to finish off transfer deadline day. That's what I did. <laughs> Fine, I knew how the wedding was going to turn out, but did, was that left back in a sign? I've got no idea. Right? And, then, and then he did sign, and then I met the bride and groom later on in the day, and they were like, oh, it's a marvellous day, isn't it? And I'm like, it's a brilliant day, you know what <laughs> Finally, that problem position is filled. Uh, 
so that, that's what I call stage one. That's what I call stage one. Uh, uh, second one was, uh, oh yeah, here. Did I once learn the Cameroon national anthem for my ill-fated 2018 <laughs> World Cup qualification campaign? <laughs> Yeah, I did that, yeah. <laughs> Do I know what the Cameroon National Anthem sounds like? No. Did I just put it to the tune of I would walk 500 miles by the players? <laughs> <laughs> because somehow it strangely fits. Yes, I did. And it goes like this. Oh, Cameroon, Bercy, O'D, Nos and Centris, Bade, Boot, Jalwa, Data, Labour, Take, join in if you know it. Uh, <laughs> Um, I like the fact there's a few people looking around going, is that the Cameroon National Anthem? And then there's some people going, it fucking should be, really. <laughs> uh, so that's what I class as stage two. Now, stage three was, uh, did I once stand outside of my bedroom while serving a touchline ban on the game? Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> stupid, but rules are rules, aren't they really? So, <laughs> to be honest, I once spent seven years trying to buy Dean Ashton and David Veer for the Aston Villa game, so I'd have a strike force at Ashton Veer. Uh, so, <laughs> bye bye enthusiasts! <laughs> I think we're potentially going to look at addict throughout the rest of the show, aren't we? So, uh, so if I'm going to suggest I'm an addict, okay, what you need to do if you're going to so like and accept that you're addicted to something, okay, you need to look back at the, the root cause of it. You need to accept it first of all, look back at the root cause, then work out how you got into it, how you're going to fix yourself, and then that's how you want to do it, right? So I did a little bit of looking back and to sort of see where all the time went, right? You know, so I've gone, have I really played this game for 20 years, right? This is the first question that you work out. I have, I have played the entire 20 years, right? Now what I wanted to do was quantify that. In the man hours now because every single manager in this room and I will refer to you as managers right uh, <laughs> you've all earned the respect you deserve right so I'm going to address you properly <laughs> some of these shows have become what I like to refer to as, as a counselling session uh, that's, that's what we get uh, so because we all like stats what I've done is I've put a lot of stats together and we're going to try and work out the actual amount of man hours I've potentially put into this game okay so I've worked out hypothetically if I played one hour of every single day for 20 years, right, that would equate to 7,300 hours of my life. Now, I know there's already one bloke at the front going, how it's only 20 years, there's been five leap years in that time, where's those other five hours? Don't you worry, my friend, they're in there as well. Right, there you go, that's them there, so... Yeah, that's accuracy 20 right there now, isn't it, right? So... Uh... But, but, that is for one hour a day. Now, everyone in this room knows it is physically impossible to only play just one hour a day, isn't it, right? Like, because it's not like FIFA. It's not, you can't just play for an hour and then go and do something more productive, right? With an hour on Football Manager, that is barely long enough to meet your staff and players for the first time, isn't it, okay? <laughs> Like, never mind trying to come up with a tactic that's going to counteract Stoke's long ball techniques <laughs> if uh, both your centre-halves are only five foot nine with low jumping strength and head and attributes and you've got a 16-year-old grayed-out goalkeeper on the bench, right? Shit! <laughs> it's going to get real and you're going to be in there for a bit longer than an hour, is all I'm saying. Right? You get the notepads out and everything, looking back now, you've done this before, you know? So, so let's say an hour again, like, let's maybe try and go a slightly conservative estimate again, right? Let's say maybe three hours a day, right? Three hours a day for 20 years, we take 7,305, we multiply that by three, we come out with 21,915 hours, which is disgusting, especially when you divide that by 24, the number of hours in every single day, it comes out at a rather depressing two and a half years of my life, right? <laughs> two and a half years, I could have got my fucking coaching badges for real in two and a half years. <laughs> could have almost done a paleontology degree, which would have really helped with the dinosaur show as well. <laughs> you know, 
another thing I could have done, because another thing I could have done is I could have learned a second language. Could have learned a second language. Could have learned a second language. That would have been quite useful, because that would have allowed me to manage in non-English speaking countries as well. <laughs> uh, don't know about you, you just take the A's head out of my job. It gets very difficult when you change the game language to Dutch for no reason. Uh, <laughs> don't know what you're saying, mate. <laughs> picked up a Steve McLaren accent, and then I moved back. <laughs> I could have learned the language, that would have been useful, right? You know, like 21,000 hours, Rosetta Stone reckons it only takes 96 hours to become fluent in a second language. 21,000 hours, I could have learned 228 of the bastards, you know? <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't, that would have been good though, that would have been good, because that's how, that's how Jose Mourinho got started, wasn't it? You know, he was Bobby Robson's interpreter at Porto, and he sort of went on to do all right in the world of football management, that would have been good, you know? But, but no, I didn't do that, you know? That would have been a way in the football. The closest I've ever got to being a footballer was editing my Myself into the database of Champ Man 98 99, right? That's... And yes, I had a maximum potential of 200, of course I did, I'm not an idiot. Uh, you know? Because that's the thing, I wanted to be a footballer. I wanted to be a footballer. Like everyone in this room probably wanted to be a footballer at some point. In fact, I was a Chiquista before I even had a word, right? There, that's where I am. But I wasn't very good, I wasn't very good, so I didn't end up doing that, right? So there we go. We're looking at the whole 20 years, that's what I've done, that's the context, okay? Now, what got me into playing this though, right? Because, like I say, if I'm going to say I'm an addict, right, we need to go right back, okay? We've qualified the amount of time we've spent. What was the trigger, right? How did I get into this? Now, Obviously, the game came out, first time it came out, 92, 93, right? The championship manager was called back then, some people already looking around nodding, going, he knows his shit, this boy, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've researched it, don't you worry about that, right? And uh, if anyone wants to go old school at any point, feel free, just hit the space bar, right? I'll talk quicker. Uh, <laughs> Beat one's a punchline queued up, can't say any better than that. Uh, so there we go, championship manager 92, 93, 94, that was when the first game came out, right? Okay, other interesting things that happened around about that time. Sky had just invented football with the formation of the Premier League, that was very nice of them. Uh, and also, it was quite important, a personal thing for me at the time, was that that was the year that my parents got divorced, which I know is a weird thing to talk about in comedy shows. You sort of think, all right, that's a bit of a strange thing, right? But it was a trigger, it was a trigger, right? Now, I was fine with it personally, okay, because me and my original dad didn't really get on. We had three things in common, my surname, this fucking nose, right, and, uh, <laughs> and he was the fella that got me into football in the first place, right, that's all we had in common. Now, I'm a little lad from Washington, right, that's where I'm originally from, okay, now when I was growing up, picking my football team, as you know, Washington's very split down the middle, right, black and white and red and white, and I didn't want to just lose half of my mates by picking one or the other. So I lost all of my mates by deciding to be an Aston Villa fan aged eight, right? Which was a fucking stupid decision I have still not lived out, right? You know? And that's the thing, right? That does affect you, right? You pick your football team, you can't change it, right? Everyone in this room knows you can't change your football team, right? The only time you're allowed to have feelings for another football club is if you've managed them for 10 straight seasons on any version of football manager, right? That's... That's the thing, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I, was, I, was speak, I was speaking to a few people recently and they were saying, oh, you know, like, what's the big draw of this game? What's the draw? And I'm like, oh, well, it gives every one of us the chance to work out whether we're better than the actual manager who's in charge now, you know? And I'll be honest, I've played the new footy manager, right, 15, very, very good. And you know what? Paul Lambert is doing a very good job in very difficult circumstances. That's... <laughs> I don't know what we're on his back for, to be honest, uh, you know. And, that, and that's the thing, that's the thing, right? So like I said, parents got divorced now, right? I'd played all the gateway drugs, you know, like Dino Dini's goal, kick-off, sensible, the summer, that sort of thing, right? So, like, and obviously this new one was going to come along, and of course I was going to take it, right? Of course I was going to take it, you know? Up there, up in my bedroom on my old Amiga, of course it was on the old Amiga, wasn't it, right? Uh, but there was no, there was no internet back in those days as well, right? So when Mum's downstairs not being very happy, I'm upstairs on the, on the Amiga playing my game. She knows I'm not looking at internet pornography because the internet's not invented. I'm trying to find a new Slovenian winger on a very limited database. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then doing loads of printouts to put in the A4 ring binder for who's going to work well with Chris Armstrong. That's what I was doing there, so. <laughs> oh, I've all done it. Don't look at me and think I'm the only dickhead in the room, right, you know? <laughs> So there we go, there we go, right? So that's, what, that's what's got me into it, okay? That's the sort of the base for how I've managed to get into this game, right? So like I say, 12, 13 years old, getting into the game, and it's going brilliant, because I get to look at football in a different way, okay? Now, like I say, I wanted to be a footballer. I wasn't good enough, 
because I started to look at things a little bit more tactically, this game allowed me to do that. Now, what we're looking at during the course of the show, as I say, the title is Football Manager's Room of My Life, okay? So it's quite a, quite a grandiose title. I think Football Manager played quite a significant part of my life, isn't as snappy. So I had to look at what we tried to maybe ruin, right? So social life, jobs, relationships, I think they're the easy ones to look at, okay? Some people during the course of the tour have suggested others, you know, like maybe they've failed their exams or something. That's fine, that's quite a common one, I get that. Um, in fact, there's one thing I need to mention, by the way. Um, so I will chat to you and we'll find out a few bits and pieces. Um, I had one guy in the show in Mansfield at the start of the tour, I asked him what he does for a living, and he stood up and he just looked at everyone else in the audience and went, I'm the Ajax manager, aren't I? And I was like, brilliant. <laughs> Fair play to him as well, we all just went, yep it is, yeah, definitely, yeah, well done. You know, because that's the thing, right, Because that, that, so it's not just me, right, people do blur the lines around a little bit with this game, okay, so I want to look at potentially what this game's ruining, right, now social life I think is an easy one to look at first of all, because, because it's everywhere, right, because it's everywhere, you know, back in the day it was in one place and one place only, as I say, on the Amiga, upstairs, in the bedroom, that's the only place it is. Now. I've got one on my iPad, I've got one on my phone, I've got one on my laptop, I've got three games going on at once now, I don't know who I'm managing, I'm genuinely confused, and last week on the way to Aberdeen, I bought a player while having a poo on a train, that blew my mind. I had never dreamed of that 20 years ago, but you know what, I have had a brilliant time ever since, you know. So, so maybe that's the thing, right? And it's quite an anti-social game as well. It's not like FIFA where you're playing players all over the world and that. It's quite an anti-social game. It's very sort of insular, you know? And, and uh, my missus gave me an article to read recently. Um, she gave me this article from the Daily Mail. Now, she reads the Daily Mail because she's a racist who likes to see what celebrities get fat. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and what this article had said was that Football Manager was the second worst game in the world for relationships, right? Second. Call of Duty, obviously, was number one, right? Now, I reckon the reason Call of Duty was number one is because it's in one place and one place only. It's on the big telly, right, okay? You can't have a sneaky game of Call of Duty. She knows you're playing Call of Duty because her programs have gone off. <laughs> <laughs> You can't be sat there playing Call of Duty and she'll be going, oh, Emmerdale's got a bit violent in Aspect, you're right, yeah. <laughs> you know? But Footy Manager, it's different, isn't it? Like I say, we've got it on all sorts of devices. Now, I can be sat on my laptop trying to do some work. She doesn't know I'm not doing work until I'm sat there tappy, 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 tappy. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, that's not offside! <laughs> Difficult email, Tony, a little bit pet. I think the Wi-Fi's gone down. <laughs> So that's the thing, so it's the second worst game in the world, right? In fact, it's also, it's also been cited for obviously relationships, it's gonna be a bad thing. In fact, there's been 35 cases of divorce in the UK where football manager has been cited as a reason for those marriages failing. I know, I know, but get this, Miles Jacobson, the fella who's in charge of Sports Interactive, the company who made the game, right? He's been called as a witness twice to defend. <laughs> not his fault, is it, really? You know, you can't go to court and go, right, well, look, to be honest, you know, if their marriage is in that much trouble, okay, that they are arguing whether Emil Heskey is a viable option as a target man slash secondary striker, right, then, you know what, I think their marriage has got bigger troubles than that, you know, because everybody in this room knows that Emil Heskey, no matter whether it's in the real world or the virtual world, is never a viable option to be a target man slash second striker. I mean, look at this big daft bastard here, right, this is... Oh, man, right. This, this is a man, this is a man who's had a professional football career spanning 18 years, okay? 18 years. I have to, sorry I've got to go to real football for a second, but it just proves that what we do here in the virtual world is still not as stupid as some of the stuff that happens in the real world, right, okay? Because you know what? You couldn't make this up, right? He has played 563 times at league level, okay, where he scored 125 league goals. A terrible ratio for a striker. That's one in four, right? Cancer is one in three. Now, just... <laughs> it's just for comparison, okay? So... 
divorce is one in two, right? So there you go. So that means that both cancer and divorce are more prolific than Alan Hesse. Right now. <laughs> now, this is the point, though, where some people will try and defend Emil Hesky, right? They will say, oh, you know what, but that's not Hesky's game, is it? Goal scoring, right? He's the first striker who got away with not scoring goals, right? Apparently, his job in the world is to hold the ball up, to bring others into play, to run the channels, to lay it off, to get assists. I thought, fine. Let's have a look at his assist record as well. <laughs> now, 18 years as a professional footballer, Emil Heskey has 15 assists. <laughs> yep. Less than one a season, um, the same as Shola Amiobi, and in fact, one more than Phil Neville. And you know what, right? <laughs> I like Phil Neville as a utility man, but I would not play him as a second striker, you know? So, and of course, let us not forget he's played in national football as well. He had 62 times he's graced the field for England, scored seven goals in that time. I mean, again, it's woeful, it's woeful, right? So I thought we need to have a comparison here, right? International level, let's look at some of the players who played around throughout the same amount of times as Emil, see if anyone else has got a better goal scoring ratio. You know what? I was quite surprised with one person I found. A fella called Andy Selva. Now, Andy Selva, some of you may or may not know, Andy Selva plays for San Marino. That's right, San Mofucking Reno. <laughs> <laughs> you remember them, don't you? Yeah? Right. He has played 58 times for San Marino, scored eight goals. San Marino have only scored 19 goals in their entire fucking history as well. So. <laughs> So, Emil Heskey is shitter than a postman from San Marino, that's... <laughs> that's what we're looking at here, and I'm sorry for getting wound up, I am sorry for getting wound up, I shouldn't get wound up, this is real football, I can't control real football, we need to look at the virtual world, you know, but... Because I'd like to think that I'd be, if I was a manager, I'd be as in the video, like the suit and booted, that's what I'd go for, you know, not that sort of paedophile PE teacher look that somebody was in the 70s, you know? Neil Warnock, you know, not doing that, right? You know, so. <laughs> There's just something wrong about him, isn't there? I mean, it's... Like, like, but there's a thing, right? There's a thing that even playing this game, there's been points where I've lost my shit needlessly, okay? And uh, I'll give you an example. Once, I had this young kid in my youth team, brilliant player. All the coaches were like, this guy's going to be good, right? So I moved him up into the first team. He broke the club's all-time goal scoring record, then became an international superstar. And then you know what he does? Age 27. Fucks off to Inter Milan for more money. Well, you know what? Fuck you, Ian Pendy. You're dead to me now. And, uh, <laughs> it's regen as well, you know. I'm getting angry at a random name in a database here. Uh, that's, that's maybe a bit too far, isn't it, you know? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so there you go. So, like, obviously, you know, things might have been different. Things might have been different, right? Maybe if I'd not played this game, things might have been different, okay? Having said that, maybe if my parents hadn't got divorced, maybe things would be different again. If, for example, say my mum had married the bloke she was going out with before the bloke she met my dad, right? Imagine if she was still going out with this fella, things would be different again. Genuinely, you'd go out with Brian Robson, right? That was her one claim to fame. Like, I know, not great, right? But, you know, and let's face it, as a football manager, not the best person to have in the family. So, bullet dots, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but, um, but she has remarried now, she has remarried, she's got a lovely bloke in her life, my stepdad, I call him my dad now, and uh, he's brilliant, he's proper good, like, doesn't like football a great deal, so got to try and bond with him over his sense of humour, which is brilliant, cracking sense of humour, like always making jokes, one-liners, the lot, but uh, he's been married to my mum for over 15 years now, so he's fucking lost that, uh, just, <laughs> just grinding out his time to death now, I think, you know, like, like you know when, like, a Freddy Adu breaks his leg, and you think, like, you know, maybe he will still be the same, but you just know deep down he's a broken man, right, you know, that's... <laughs> sort of where we are, right? But, but that's the thing, he's, he's now, he's cool though now, he is cool, like we do, we can talk on a sort of social level now about football, which is good, right? Because obviously this is where we live, this is very, it's one of those, uh, what the media describe as a hotbed of football, right? The North East hotbed of football, like proper football town city, right? If the football team does well, the city does well. If the football team does badly, the city does bad. Loads of places like that around the country, obviously here, you've got Liverpool, you've got Glasgow, it's almost a religion, I know football religion and Glasgow in the same sentence, maybe I should avoid that, right? But, you know, they get very touchy about that. Uh, but, right, because I used to live just across the road from, from St James's Park, right? So I used to see it, right? I'm not a Villa, I'm not a Newcastle fan, I'm not a Villa fan, but I used to watch the, you know, Newcastle fans, black and white robes, you know, this ceremonial thing, you know, or if the weather's bad, no robes. Uh, just <laughs> trying to punch lightning, because, as you know, lightning's gay. Uh, just... <laughs> you know, and it was 
brilliant. Like, it was brilliant. And I, I really liked it. And I like going to football matches, and that's fantastic. And this is the one thing that I think that the game is missing at the minute, okay? Is that it isn't got an actual atmosphere. There's no atmosphere. It's just a video game. That's the point where I go, you know what? This is still just a game, right? And I've tried to create an atmosphere to get it more immersive. I'm not as bad as some people. One person on the tour uh, said that he was playing as Galatasaray. So what he did was he got a waste paper bin and set fire to it, right? And just... <laughs> Just so he had a flair, and I was like, <laughs> got a bit too far, miss, you know. Uh, like the, the furthest I've got, the furthest I've got is just chanting for my players. That's all I do, right? Like, like I had a, I had a Brazilian lad in my team once, World Player of the Year, Camilo. Oh, what a player he was! A regen as well. Uh, like whenever he got the ball, I was like, come a, come a, come a, come a, come a, Camilo. He shoots and scores. <laughs> Don't look at me like I'm a dick, I guess. <laughs> All done it. Yeah. But, uh, but that's the thing, because you sort of get too involved in it. You can get too involved in it, right? Because this is the quote, right? I'm sure you've seen this quote before. Football isn't a matter of life and death. It's much more important than that. That's the Bill Shankly quote. And that's fine, I get that, right? You get involved in the spirit of football. And that's what it's all about, because although it's not real, it is based on real football. Of course it is. The database is now classed as the second largest scouting network in the world, just behind Real Madrid. That's apparently a true fact, you know? The database has now been sold off to Prozone, so uh, the actual statistical uh, sort of database is now being worked on in, with the game in conjunction, you know? Real managers have used it as a scouting tool, like uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I mean, not a great example, I know, right? but you know, <laughs> like, he was playing real life footy manager with Vincent Tan for a bit, wasn't he? Like, oh, eight million pounds on someone we've never heard of, please. Uh, how's that worked out? We got relegated. Um, <laughs> You know, AVB, he used it as well, but again, I mean, AVB, everyone in this room, right, has seen Roberto Soldado at Valencia and thought, yeah, he cuts it in Spain, but he's never going to work over here, right, you know? <laughs> so nobody ever buys Roberto Soldado. And then David Moyes, apparently, when he was at Everton, he used to use it all the time, scouting players and stuff. Obviously, when he went to Man U, lost his laptop. Uh, <laughs> just, just bring the big Belgian bloke, shall we? Uh, <laughs> You know, and, but then, and there's things in the game where you sort of look at it and go, right, that's brilliant, you know, because that then becomes a real thing. Like, I don't know if you remember the story of Alex McLeish's son, who apparently discovered Lionel Messi when he was in the Barcelona B team, said to his dad, oh, come on, we need to try and buy this guy. He becomes the greatest player in the world. And uh, Rangers apparently did make a bid to sign Lionel Messi and Iniesta. Didn't happen, thankfully. Because <laughs> imagine them two, age 16, walking down Socky Hall Street. Their eyes would have been like, it's like Jurassic Park in high heels here. And, you know, like, boss, why is there two fat lasses getting fingered behind a bin? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> This thing, because I, I mean, I, I, remember, I, I remember discovering Zlatan Ibrahimovic when he played for Malmo. I discovered him, not some real scouts. And, uh, and, and, and so, so there's people obviously who've been predicted for great things, they become great players. You know, some things that happen on the game, though, you look and think, there's no way that would happen in real life. Like, if someone had actually done, right, on your game, if someone had bid 35 million quid for Andy Carroll, seriously, right, you'd be going, there's a bug, there's a bug in the game. <laughs> like, there's no way this is real, is it, right? You know, but for everything that the game predicts, and some things do go well, there's obviously a collection of things that don't go so well, okay? So, as an example, a perfect example is, is this lad here. This is Nile Lamptey. Oh, look at him. Look at Nile. Look at his lovely little face there. Oh, the Ghanaian Pelly. Yes. <laughs> That's what he was. He was attacking midfield forward, right, left and centre, championship manager, 93-94. You buy him, you win the league. Simple as that. Uh, 2.3 million, even better than Paul Warhurst. That's how good he was, right? Yeah, bless someone applauding at the back going, yeah, you can play everywhere on the right side, yeah. Right, oh, he was brilliant. He was a brilliant player. And, um, like, what happened was, what had happened was, uh, around the time, 93, 94, uh, I'd gone back to, because uh, I was at school, I'd gone back to a friend of mine's for some lunch, uh, a couple of quick games of Chat Manager Italia, uh, half an hour to load up, so you got loads of time to do your lunch, right? So we thought, you know what we'll do? We'll catch up on the old footy gossip. Uh, but obviously, like I said, no internet back in those days, so it's all teletext page 302. And then uh, once you've done that, quick game of bamboozle if you've got time. Uh, and, so, and, uh, and there it was, saw this teletext page 302, top headline, Villa, sign, nigh, Lamptey. And I was just looking good. 
this is amazing, right? We have bought the best player ever, right? And I went back to school, quite the thing, I'll be honest, I went back to school, quite the thing, all my mates going, oh, Tony's quite happy, isn't he? My pal comes behind going, oh, have you heard the news? And I'll go, what, what, what? Villa's, Villa's just signed Nile Ampty, right? And obviously we all knew our footy manager, Villa's gonna win the league, they bought the best player in the world, right? And us, I mean, it didn't quite work out because Nile Ampty was a bit shit, really, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> played 17 minutes in three years or something like that. And then he went back to Anderlecht and he came back to Coventry with a beard. And I don't know, I don't know what's happened with him now, but yeah, it didn't work out. It was a shame, it was a shame, you know? Like we could have bought Mark Collis and Ferrer Roscoe as well. I mean, I know they went real, but still, uh, you know. So what we did was, what we did, me and a couple of mates of mine, before this tour started, we decided that we'd sit down and have a little look at who we thought the best players on the game were who turned out to be a little bit shit in real life. And, uh, and we've decided to come up with, with what we believe is the top 11. Uh, we'll go through these, then we're gonna have, then we're gonna have half time where we all go for oranges and rub down stuff, uh, and then we come back in the second half, okay? So uh, in the style of the hit parade, let's have a little look and see who we've got. So uh, Sean, if we can use please. Now, goalkeepers are quite tricky to buy, but I thought that 700,000 pounds worth of bits in that yard is not a bad shout, is it? Good start, good start. Uh, Right back, I wanted a man who was playing in League One but was a, an international footballer the second you bought him. It's uh, Burnley's Mike Duffman Duff. <laughs> yeah. This is the point where you get people going, I'm fucking bought in! <laughs> left back, left back, I want the British Roberto Carlos from 2007, Leicester City's Joe Maddock. That's who goes in there. <laughs> yeah. Central defence. Central defence, the most reliable defender known to man. He can play anywhere in midfield and the defence. The man jumped the new Jamie Carragher, but without your goal scoring capabilities. It's Crow Alexandra and now Sunderland's Billy Jones. He's got to be in there, clearly. Um, now, who are we going to part the Billy Jones with? Billy Jones, very reliable centre half. We want someone a little bit more unpredictable, shall we say. Maybe we don't have much money, so we'll scout the free transfer section. That's what we'll do, and we'll find the one and only Teribo! <laughs> defensive midfield centre, defensive midfield centre. Well, I say defensive midfield, it's a central midfield with a downward arrow, that's all he is. Uh, it's the best £40,000 you're ever going to spend. It's Scotland's Mark Kerr! <laughs> Attacking midfield right, if you could spell his name, he was brilliant. Half Swedish, half Turkish, Kennedy Makakira Kira Kika Kalogaloo. Uh, attacking midfield left, obviously America's next top superstar, the one and only Freddie Adu. So good he could sell Superman, and he was only 13. In the Traquista role, just behind the strikers, depending upon which version you've got, you either got him from Malmo or Derby County, the Swedish sensation, Tom Zolomagogu. <laughs> and up front, two strikers, two strikers up front. Uh, first of all, the Ghanaian goal machine who puts Emil Heskey's goal score record to shame, the one and only Cherno Samba. <laughs> 132 goals in 32 matches, fuck you, Emil Heskey. Uh, <laughs> And partnering him is a guy who on Championship Manager 3 had the maximum potential of 200, now lives in Molde, Norway, where he runs a bakery for a living. It's Iceland's Andre Sigtorsson. Yeah, cool. So that is what I believe is my top 11 players on the game who turned out to be a little bit shit in real life. Now, what we're gonna do, we are gonna go for half time. Um, you've all done well so far, that's good. Uh, we're gonna keep it up, second half, I believe in you. Let's give the fans something to cheer. Uh, it's gonna be fine. So go grab yourself some drinks and stuff, we'll come back. If you can help the bar staff out by taking your drink, your glasses back to the bar, that'll be really helpful. So 15 minutes, see you back in the second section. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, I guess we all had a nice break. People go and get drinks. Hey, well done. 
make some lovely stuff. So, um, yes. Oh, it's going to kick off now. Brilliant. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't get a drink. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so we, we, left the, uh, we left the end of the first half uh, looking back at the, uh, the players. Obviously, we thought we were playing quite good. It uh, turned out to be a little bit shit in the game. Now, um, this is the point where I want you guys to chuck some more names. Because obviously, we've only got 11 there, so you're not going to get the whole thing down there. So, there'll be some people that you guys go, I can't believe you're not mentioned Stefan Zalakovic. Right? Don't worry. <laughs> you'll be annoyed. You'll be amazed at how angry some people get. You know, when you don't mention Stefan Zalakovic at the start of the show. Uh, so, so anyone else you think should be on the list? Dean Keats. Dean Keats, yes, exactly my man, you know what I'm talking about. Dean Keats, for those people who don't know, he was basically, he was like Mark Kerr as well. He was Claude McAlealy before Claude McAlealy knew he was Claude McAlealy. Uh, an amazing player with Hull, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, Walsall. Walsall, yeah. that's right, that's right, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, Dean. Yes, and you know what, you deserve a round of applause being able to say that name properly. Yeah. <laughs> He's not on the list because I couldn't spell it. So there you go. Uh, apparently. Sorry? Kim Kalstrom. Kim Kalstrom? Oh, now. Right, now. It's a contentious one, Kim Kalstrom, isn't it, right? Because he was quite a good player. He was quite a good player. He was a football manager legend. I will grant you that, but he was quite a good player. And obviously, Arsene Wenger just had a copy of Footy Manager 2002 a couple of summers ago. Just went, well, we'll get Kim Kalstrom, shall we? Because uh, and I, then I think he lent it to Poirier because he also bought Billy Jones and Oscar Astari in the same thing and just went, just passing around the same copy of the game. Just went, who's going to buy Maxim Sigalco? That's what I want to know. Uh, so, anyone else? Andre D'Alessandro. Oh, yeah, yeah, good shout as well. Very, very good shout as well. That's a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant shout. Sorry, who in the back there? Bakayoko. Bakayoko. Oh, right, yeah. Ibrahim and Bakayoko, right now. Back at your court, he went, he went to Everton, didn't he? Yeah. Right, now, at one of the shows, uh, I think it was, I think it was, uh, it was Colchester, it was the start of the tour, there was a guy who stood up and he went, uh, back at your court, and he went, I went, you played for Everton, didn't he? And he went, no, he played for Chelsea. And I went, are you sure? And he went, oh no, that's on my game, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Because that happens, you just you get like totally like mixed into it, don't you? And, like you end up with all oh, you and some mates going, no, that definitely happened, that definitely happened, and you go, that, that may not have happened, no, no, it's fine, you know. Like, because I get into chats with my mates and that, and it's like whenever there's a player linked with someone in real life, and like we don't know anything about it, and they're all going, who does anyone know about this guy here? And I'm going, he's all right, I'm a footy manager. Oh, you'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Says, says he's a wing back, but you know, move a bit forward, creativity 17, cut them inside, get loads of goals. Uh, uh, obviously, like some people, obviously, we, we haven't managed to get some of the people you, know, you guys have mentioned. I've also made my, my what I call my backup list, my squad list. Now, uh, this uh, goalkeepers were difficult ones, by the way. I know I went for Anyama, right? But, and he had quite a good World Cup. Agahawa, exactly, Julius Agahawa is on that list. He's played in a World Cup, can you believe it? Right? Anthony van den Bora, he should have been there. Football manager legend Anthony van den Bora. Um, I just need to mention this as well. Uh, there was the European Championships a few years ago, uh, and ITV were broadcasting it, so let's face it, the quality was shite, right? And, uh, <laughs> like, Anthony van der Boer got the ball, and uh, it was Clyde Tilsley commentating, and he said the best piece of commentary I've ever heard from Clyde Tilsley, okay? Van der Boer touches the ball, Tilsley goes, live on air, might I add, apparently, if you buy this player and train him up on a popular management simulation game, he becomes a world beater. Brilliant. <laughs> Best bit of football commentary known to man, isn't it? <laughs> you know, um, Tommy Swindle Larson as well. There's okay, loads of Scandinavians, you've got them all for about like 30 quid or something. And it's like <laughs> Nicholas Alexander said he went to Sheffield Wednesday, he could play all over the place. And then there was Per Cillian Shellbread, the Norwegian Zinedine Zidane. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've seen him play live as well. Like, and not just like, on a scouting mission that I just took a little bit too seriously. <laughs> <I thought. laughs> Well, I'll only buy players I've seen, and, uh, and, and there's a ferry from Shields, so let's go and have a look, right? <laughs> You're 
your face, that was true, wouldn't it? And, uh, but no, I went, I saw, I saw a play for Rosenborg, and uh, they were playing Mulder at the time, uh, who, yes, they did have Magne Hosek in the team, uh, attacking midfield, forward, left, right, and centre. Uh, again, very, very good player, but a bit crap in real life. And uh, so Rosenberg had, uh, had Shell bread in there, they had uh, Big John Carew up front as well, he was bossing the whole thing, he already looked like a good player. And I saw Shell bread, and I was like, there's me man, that's the man, he's going to be amazing, everything's going to be fine, and I'm just going to have to try and find someone to talk to when I get back to the UK, right? Ball came in about three minutes in, bounced over his foot, and I went, you're fucking shit, you! <laughs> went back home and sold him straight away. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> Spent the rest of the night going, what have I done? I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, Daniel Beerofka as well, he's a German lad, you got him on. If you had him on one wing and Tranquilo Barnetta on the other, that's just like bombs going in, isn't it, right? <laughs> Even Heskey could score goals with them two as a supply line. <laughs> You know, bounce off his arse or something. Uh, and there's, there's one down at the bottom, I don't know, people at the back definitely can't see that. That's Sergei McCorfor. Now, he scores with Lionel Morgan, one of the old Wimbledon lads in there. And, uh, and I, did, I did a show, let's say, I did the show uh, like at the end of the festival, first of all. And I think we're about three days into the festival run. And uh, I got someone tweeted me after the show and just went, I can't believe Sergei McCorfor is on your shit players list. I've got his name on the back of my Grimsby shirt. And I was, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yep, Grimsby shirt, mate, isn't it? A Barcelona shirt, which is what he was wearing when I was managing him. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the list of clubs he's had, it's like, it's fucking long, man, right? So, so yeah, so I think it's safe to say that maybe football manager ruined their lives. There was no way they could live up to the hype in the game and stuff, and that's fine. And we've obviously <laughs> looked at, at other bits and bobs. You know, we looked at social life a little bit. We looked like a bit of relationships, jobs. I think another obvious one where it's maybe affected me more than maybe it should have done. Um, I remember, because uh, before I did this, I was, uh, I was a college lecturer. Uh, and if anyone's curious as to how long you can blag a career in teaching, by the way, uh, before someone realises you don't know what you're doing and uh, you don't really give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> eight, eight years. Uh, <laughs> eight years, not a single wonder kid. How shit is that? <laughs> Taught film production as well. Not really teaching, let's be honest. I used to get guys coming in every day going, Tony, what we learned today? And I'd be like, you're watching Cool Runnings when I get rid of this fucking hangover. That's what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, this laptop's hung up the projector. This laptop's got the Europa League final on. You decide which one I'm playing with, you know? <laughs> and you know, it was crap, right? Didn't matter whether you put the desks in a 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3. Those little bastards never learn any quicker. Um, <laughs> And, um, and I used to say, I was terrible, terrible all that. I used to send them off to Blockbuster Video under the guise of work experience in the film industry. And I uh, can't do that now that Blockbuster Video's closed. And uh, then Jessops went, and then Woolworths <coughs> went, and I thought, oh, where are they going to graduate to? Um, <laughs> and then, of course, obviously the high street started crumbling, and I was just going, I was panicking. I was like, oh, no, the high street's just going to be one bloke at the bottom of the street with an iPad going, I'm doing an Amazon order. Does anybody want anything? <laughs> 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 Just time to get out of here. You know, some people ask me, some people ask me, they go, Tony, Tony, was, was, teaching, was teaching really that bad? Yes, it was, right? Yes, it was. And it ties in with, uh, with the worst moments of my life, both emotionally and physically, and also the worst moments of my life, football manager wise. Right now, uh, picture the scene, okay, it's a few years back. Um, I'd just been offered the chance to go uh, and get a new job in Birmingham. Uh, a teaching job, by the way, not a footy manager job. Uh, <laughs> not managing the blue noses, come on, right? Uh, so, so I thought, right, I'll move to Birmingham, that'll be fine, that can work out okay, you know, because I get to see the villa every other couple of weekends, that'll be fun. Uh, what can possibly go wrong? Uh, and it turned out that quite a lot went wrong quite quickly, to be honest, because uh, the teaching job was shit, right? That lied to me and the thing said, oh, it's going to be really fun. It wasn't, right? And the, the, the management of the, of the sort of college, they were starting to put a lot of pressure on me very quickly. They wanted results instantly. And I was going, look, the youth setup's terrible, right? You're not going to get anything here. Like, you need to invest. You know, I know how this works, right? You know, speak to the chairman, man. We'll move those budget sliders across. We'll have a great time, right? And, uh, no, no, right, and, uh, so that was quite bad. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd started a relationship as well with, with a new lady just before I'd moved down to Birmingham, uh, and that's, that meant a long distance relationship, which of course is not ideal, because as you all know, unless you live near the ground, you're not going to perform properly at the weekends. And, uh, so there was a bit of strain going there. Um, 
And then, and then I also got a phone call from my mum saying her and my stepdad were arguing again at that point. They were, their relationship was a bit rocky and that, and they were sort of thinking about breaking up. And I'd always seen them as sort of my, my board, essentially. You know, they were the ones I went to when I was skinned. And I was like, so it's a little bit like when there's a takeover happening, and you know, you're not allowed any money at all. And you're like, oh, this is shit, this, like, you know. And, uh, so what I'd done was I started drinking quite a bit. Like, I, started, I got quite depressed at this point. So I started drinking quite a bit. Never play footy manager pissed, like, oh, God. Like, waking up the next morning going, what, 37 million for a 17-year-old Romanian right back? What the hell am I doing here? Back rubbing the club. <laughs> You know, so I was going into work hungover, which apparently schools and colleges and universities do not like. Uh, so uh, they were getting called into meetings, you know, like disciplinary meetings and that. And uh, my job security had gone from insecure to precarious. And, uh, <laughs> a couple of pricks declared interest in my job as well. I'm like, hang on. I'm bloody con, yes. <laughs> And, and all the time, all the time while this is going on, I'm really struggling to keep my job as Aston Villa manager on my laptop, right? So I'm thinking, right, something's got to give, you know? There's too much happening around here, right? So the girlfriend sort of, she's in my face like that, right? And you know what? You know, when you sort of go on, you're saying, it's, it's me or the game, it's me or the game. Someone's getting transfer listed on there, right? So I did that, free transferred her, didn't need her, right? And, 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 uh, and then, so like, obviously more arguments with mum and dad, and then sort of more drinking, and obviously struggling with the game, and struggling with college and work, and going, right, they have something got to give here, someone's got to give, and I made a decision which I still stand by today. I quit my teaching job to save my Aston Villa career. Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew I'm with friends here, you back me up here, don't you? But well played, sir, yes. And I walked out there with a bit of pride going, I've socked it to the man, right? Yeah, look at me, I've left me teaching job with that. And I went back and I played the laptop. Three games later, sacked by Villa as well. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Just lost everything. Lost. I've lost two jobs, a girlfriend. <laughs> it's gone, this is shit, right? So I'm just sitting there, like, going, right, okay, more drinking, more drinking, right? And then a friend of mine rang and said, oh, Tony, come on, like, you we're a bit worried about you, right? Come and, come and have a couple of games of five-a-side. That'll take your mind off things. And I'm going, right, fine. We'll go and play a five-a-side, like, the next day when I'm sobered up a bit, okay? And uh, because, as we mentioned earlier, that I'm a bit of a trachista, um, I pulled out of a tackle, uh, which meant that I snapped the cruciate ligament in my knee. So proper red injured at this point. Uh, like, sent straight to specialist, you know, like nine months out, and I'm going, oh, no, right, so there I am, like, cast all my leg of that, right, and, like, sort of, could they come out, and they sort of, they're giving you quite a few, like, sort of bits of medication, that sort of take the pain away, and you know what goes well with medicine? Whiskey. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm, like, lying out, like, probably out on the sofa, just like, and then I sort of, I pass out on the sofa, and then, like, wake up the next morning with, like, a real headache, I hang over, and my leg's really sore, and that, and I'm going, oh, this was the worst week of my life, like, things can't, get any worse surely and then what I did was I turned the TV on Sky Sports News that little yellow news ticker just went across the bottom saying the words that I'd never ever hoped it would ever say right it just said Aston Villa signed Emil Heskey and I went you can fuck right off <laughs> Have you ever thrown a crutch at a television before, right? Eh? I mean, I remember mean, Heskey tried once, took out some of my drywall, but you know, it's just, oh. Like, I don't know if you know the story about this. Apparently, at the time, Martin O'Neill got offered a fella called Radamal Falcao for four million quid and thought that Emil Heskey for four million quid was a better idea, right? And ridiculous, you know? So there I am, sat there going, I'm going to have to leave now, right? There's no way I can stay in Birmingham where Emil Heskey's making a career and I'm not. So I was like, right, pack me bags back up, I'm going to go, right? But I didn't know where to go because uh, I couldn't move back in with mum and dad because obviously I was 32 at the time. That's, you know, a bit weird there, busy arguing that. I'm not in a good place can't go back there so I decided to go and try and like re sort of reconcile with the, with the with the girlfriend you know and you know what contract negotiations are like you know like <laughs> eventually we agreed a three-year deal with an option to extend so uh, <laughs> moved back up here uh, which was cool it was really good to be honest and like and I don't remember like a lot of the move because I was like I said I was quite medicated and um, and like what we used to have in the flat we used to have this this coffee table on the, in the front room now I don't remember this happening Okay, but um, 
In the coffee table was Football Manager 2010, a classic version, I'm sure you'll agree, right? Yeah, that 2010, 2007, 2001 and 2. I know it sounds like we're talking about fine wine here, but you know. <laughs> 2002, a lovely drop, yeah, 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 right? So 2010's down there, right? And uh, I'm sort of laid up on the sofa and that, and I wasn't gonna play footy manager, I was fed up, right? Got sacked by Villa and thought, you know what, nah, me and you's done, right? I'm not playing it ever again. And you know, you know, you know when it whispers at you? Right? Like, <laughs> it does. Right? So I was there and I was like laying up on the sofa and it was like, Tony, Tony, do you want to have another game, do you? And I'm like, no, right? He goes, oh, go on, man, you've got nothing else to do, have you? And I'm like, well, you made a good point here, to be honest. Right? You know, <laughs> six months of just lying around doing bugger all, I suppose. So yeah, might as well, fine, right, whatever, I'll do it. Right? So I did it. I put the laptop on, load up Football Manager 2010, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do something that I've not done before and play with my rules now, right? Not being Villa, because you know, you've let me down, right? So I wanna take a new challenge. I wanna go from the bottom, right? And I didn't care what happened, right, you know? So, because I was gonna pick a club that I had no affiliation with, no feelings towards, if they sat me, it wasn't a trouble. I was gonna a little journeyman career, have a little time, right? Go and see the world. That's what I thought I was gonna do, right? And, uh, <laughs> And, um, and, and so what I did was, what I did, I wanted something that was sort of similar to how I felt emotionally at the time, because I felt quite low, so like I said, go right at the bottom, I'm going to go blue square north, that's what I'm going to do, pick a team that I don't care about, that team was Blythe Spartans, right, yeah, yeah, well the thing was, right, I just figured it was close to home so I didn't have to move again, right, you know, so, <laughs> quite frankly, Harrogate Town can fuck right off, as far as I'm concerned, they're the south, right, so, Took Blythe Spartans, because I didn't really care at the time. I just thought, you know what, take Blythe Spartans, that'd be fun. Right? But that was until I spent 35 seasons with them. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Taking them from Blue Square North to not just the Premier League title, but to the European Champions League title as well. <laughs> yes, you're right to applaud, you're right to applaud. That is an achievement. Some people still looking around going, I don't think that is an achievement. That fucking is, right? That's like giving someone from Biker Grove an Oscar. You're not going to see this happen in the real world, are you? <laughs> no. And I did what any man my age would do when I won the Premier League title with Blythe Spartans. I text all my mates to say, you're not going to believe it. This is incredible. Then, right, get this, got told off two hours later when my missus came home from work and found me pissed and covered in champagne, right? Because... <laughs> Because apparently the bottle of champagne we had in the fridge, we were saving. <laughs> 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 like, what more special occasion is there than winning the Premier League title with a non-league football club for the first time? No idea. No idea. Eight seasons later, that's what it was, wasn't it? Champions League day. Oh. Big day, big day for the club, big day for me personally as well. Uh, you know, so like I had to have a bit of a celebration, really, get a bit of atmosphere going on, you know, Champions League final. So I downloaded the Champions League music to put on my laptop to play a full match. And, uh, um, I put my suit on, obviously, right? So, <laughs> proud day for the club, it's the European Champions League. You can't turn on your pajamas, they'll think you're a dick, right? So, <laughs> Suits on, right? Champions League music's playing, suits on. I remember we were playing in Russia, so I opened a window to let a bit of draft come through. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, changing all the clocks in the house was a bit too far, but right? Was... You know, when you're in the zone, you're in the zone, aren't you, right? So there I am, right? Playing this, and, and, and we won, we won the Champions League, right? All that blood, sweat and tears, everything that I put in this game, you know, like dates I've missed, birthdays I've forgotten about, you know, meetings I've not gone to, it all culminated in this one fantastic victory when Dan Martin whipped the ball in from the wing, the defender hits it back, Milos Djordjevic, 30-year-old Serbian striker, he hits it from 25 yards, arrows it into the bottom corner, we beat Valencia 3-0. I'm just sitting there going, finally, I have been validated for life, right? This is what I've been put on this planet to do, right? And, uh, and I thought, how how can I celebrate such a momentous achievement? I'd already done the champagne thing, so I thought, you know what, there needs to be more, there needs to be more. So the next day, I booked myself onto one of those city sightseeing buses you get in town, and uh, <laughs> yeah. gave myself an open top bus ride at Newcastle to celebrate. <laughs> Not 
not just me, not just me, of course. Took the laptop as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Clear's trough, it wasn't mine. Um, maybe the tinfoil European Cup was a bit too far, but never mind. Uh, but yeah, so basically, I think potentially enthusiast has well and truly <laughs> fucked off, really. Uh, we're, we're looking at addict, we're looking at addict, and that's fine, I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that, right? Because obviously, you know, like uh, that's not the worst thing that we've done, you know, there's been bits and pieces, obviously, other stuff, and those build up that career where maybe I did get a little bit too involved, you know? Like, I know I shouldn't be the only bloke who has a blind Spartan shirt with a regen player's name and number on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I really should not be the person who has two blind spawn shirts with <laughs> regen players' names and numbers on the back, and I should not have autographed them both. And <laughs> framed them and put them as pride of place above my television in the house. Um, I burned the impenders when he left, right? And, uh, <laughs> So I did that. Uh, I, we had the, the, me and the missus had the hypothetical discussion recently as well. A couple of weeks ago, it was the Euro million, 100 odd million. She went, What are we going to do if we win the low Euro millions? I went, We're buying by the Blind Spartans. I put me in charge. That's what we're doing. Uh, and, uh, and she's now barred me from playing the lottery. So I think that's cutting her nose off despite her face somewhat, to be honest. Uh, but what she doesn't know, right? What she doesn't know, a little secret between us. A few months back, Blythe Spartans started selling shares in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Bought shares? <laughs> totally gonna take over eventually, right? Uh, you know, uh, there's someone else, someone else, one of the shows they said, oh, uh, what they'd done was they'd gone into work, they work in an office, and uh, they had like a little photograph and they put it as proud of place on their desk. And uh, they were going, oh, what's your photograph of? And they just went, I had a son in the game. And it's just like a little Photoshop of him with his arm round, you know, the little greyed out head. And it just. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fucking genius, that is. <laughs> right, but, but that's not, but like I say, that's the, those are the worst things. Those are not the worst things that I've done on the game. The worst thing that I did was 18 months back when Blind Spartans sacked their manager. And uh, I thought, I've got to do it, haven't I? Really, I've got to, I've got to apply for the job, really. Uh, and uh, what I'm about to read is the uh, rejection letter that they sent back. Uh, <laughs> Highlighting all the reasons that I am not suitable for their position. See, Blythe Spartans look genuinely true. Uh, this is the response they got. This mm -hmm. is, uh, Dear Mr. Jameson, starts formal, obviously, job application, in it, right? Uh, it says, Thank you for contacting us regarding the current managerial vacancy here at Croft Park. I think you'll find it's the Jameson Arena. Uh, <laughs> Sixty-five thousand seats. There's only forty thousand people living. Fucking blind bitch. <laughs> Bit of success, and I'm busting them in, aren't I? Right, you know. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for contacting us. Your application certainly raised some interesting points, and by cross-referencing them against the criteria specified for the role in question. We would like to deal with each of these in turn. 35 years worth of managerial experience is certainly very impressive. Although the fact you signed it from Tony Jameson, age 32 and three quarters. <laughs> and that left us slightly confused. Given your level of experience, we're surprised we haven't heard of you, especially after your recent run in the European Champions League. <laughs> Unless, unless, of course, you were that bloke we saw a couple of months back on the City Tour bus with his laptop singing We Are The Champions. <laughs> nitpicking, aren't they? Right? I know they're nitpicking, I do, right? because there was a bit on the online application form where they wanted to know what I knew about football tactics. Right? 21,000 hours, double expert in football tactics right here. Right? I know football tactics inside out. And maybe, naively, I thought that perhaps they didn't, right? So I thought I'd put it in layman's terms, right? Spell it out in the most simplistic way possible. This, see if they can understand football tactics. I reckon you've got to hold and give, but do it at the right time. <laughs> Uh, 
can be slow or fast, we always get to the line. <laughs> They'll always hit you and hurt you, defend and attack, but I can assure you there are many other, other ways to beat them than by simply getting round the back. Now, they claim I have oversimplified the intricacies of modern day football. Oh, and uh, yeah. As for the drawing of what we can only presume to be John Barnes, uh, to emphasise your point, <laughs> was deemed misguided at best and racist at worst. Um, so... <laughs> just a little bit there. Uh, um, oh, more, more nitpicking. Given the current economic climate and the fact we're a non-league football club, we feel it would be unwise to erect a bronze statue of you outside the ground to mark your achievements with the Spartans. Everything I've done for them. Right. <laughs> then it goes yada yada yada, like some actual reasons, like football manager's not real, I'm not qualified, like real bullshit stuff that just won't stand up in court, right? You know? <laughs> says, after addressing these points, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for contacting us. But we feel that given your lack of experience, we will not be taking your application any further. Good luck on your next European campaign. <laughs> kind regards, Ian Evans, General Manager, Blind Spartans FC. <laughs> Aged 53 in real life, but in your game, either 88 or possibly deceased. So. <laughs> well, it was nice to reply and all, but you know, I kind of but like to say they've nitpicked a little bit too much there, haven't they, you know? But I know I'm not the only man who's ever done this. I know I'm not the only person who's ever applied for a job based on their football manager CV. I mean, there was obviously the most famous example was when uh, Brian Robson got sacked at Middlesbrough. Someone wrote in and Steve Gibson wrote him a little reply back, said, oh, I think you're a little bit overqualified. You know, we should really be pitching your sights more towards Barcelona than the Middlesbrough. And then every other job now that comes available, there's always a selection of football manager fans right in with their CVs. I mean, let's face it, that probably explains how fucking Massimo Cellino does his uh, uh, sort of recruitment, doesn't it? Like that Dave Hopperday must have got swindled in the Champions League or something. It's been arguing for goal. 33 more other knobs to get through this season, you know what I mean? One a game, that's what we're going to do. One manager a match. You know? And then the course of the world changed, the world changed uh, a little while ago with this fella, uh, Vugar Husenzadze. Now, I don't know if anyone remembers Vugar Husenzadze, other than the fact that he's a 21 year old Swedish lad. Um, he wrote to uh, second division Azerbaijani club FC Baku with his football manager CV, and uh, well, he's now their fucking manager, isn't he? So that's. <laughs> I mean, maybe I was pitching my sights too high for blind Spartans. Maybe that was the trouble there. Uh, so, so that's maybe helping change the world of football. Like I say, you know, football manager now is becoming part of the football culture. Right? Like I say, the whole thing with the pro zone, that's maybe bringing the, the world with the virtual world, the real world, uh, where it's, so it's all turning in nice and simple now. You know, he's obviously got his first job. That's brilliant. Uh, Clermont Foot over in France. They're the team I'm playing on 2014, by the way, because I just fancied a little holiday with some cheese and wine. And I had a triple all book, so I thought I can do enough French to get by here. Uh, every press conference, I order a cheese and ham toasty and ask where the train station is. So, right. They hired the first ever female manager at the start of the season, Elena Costa, uh, very well respected in the football community as well. She uh, used to work for Celtic and Porto and uh, now she's always the first manager. Um, she lasted a couple of days though, because uh, apparently the chairman's a bit of a dick, uh, so she left and uh, they replaced her with another football manager, another female manager, which was very lovely. Uh, but apparently he'd said in a press conference, well, we had to go for another one. We've changed all the toilet signs. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, <laughs> but what I wanted to do at this point in the show, right, is have a little look at maybe a sort of different take on football. Because obviously I say the world's changed, right? Now, I've not just stuck with 35 seasons of Blythe Spartans. Oh, no, I'm not a quitter, right? Okay. I'm now 50 seasons in the job, okay? I'm 84, right? Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Some people ask, you know, what happens when you, when you get 84? Are you going to die? Do you die? die in the game, apparently you get to 100 and you live forever, right? So therefore, we fix immortality in the future. That's quite nice, isn't it, right? So this is my sort of sports almanac kind of look back at football, because obviously what happens in the game turns out real, doesn't it? That's what happens in shooting, sure, right? Yeah. So just to prove that I obviously have done up to 2060, uh, there's my game date there. That's 41 days on that actual save game alone. Uh, addictiveness rating, what are humans there? So... <laughs> Right, 
So, and like I say again, we'll, we'll back all this up, right? So, there you go, I've, had, I've been playing the game that long, my hair's changed slightly from this. Uh, also, I've, I've developed glasses now as well. I've not developed glasses, you don't develop glasses, do you? I've, I've been given, uh, I'm now bespectacled. Uh, and I remember when I went to the opticians and they went, oh, you've got to get glasses. I was like, I thought I wouldn't be too happy about it. But then I put them on, and with the beard, the first words I said was, I'm totally the new Jürgen Klopp, though, aren't I? Right, so... <laughs> I'm going to get a big parker and just start shouting at things now. Uh, so, yeah, there you go, 84. Um, uh, I must point out there's a slight mistake here. There is a slight mistake, right? I do need to apologise because I can't lead you down this path, right? Date of birth, 23rd of the 2nd, 1975, right? That's not actually my date of birth, right? This is 2010 version, so you start in 2009. Uh, my actual date of birth <coughs> is the 23rd of the 2nd, 1980. But that would have made me 29 at the start of the game, and I didn't think it was realistic to have a 29-year-old manager. So they all just, yeah, that's the bit I'm questioning, isn't it? You know, that's the only bit I don't think is realistic here. Uh, obviously, I do become the greatest manager of all time, better than Alex Ferguson and Mark Hughes, who apparently strangely becomes a fucking brilliant manager. Uh, I mean, look at that. 14 major trophies with Man City, right? Um, Igor Boudan, by the way, Newcastle fans, is a regen manager who does quite well for us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Cla Claudio Nsinani, yeah. Oh, me and him had some battles along the way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, obviously, we'll look at the title. The Premier League doesn't change too much, apart from the fact that Spartans are about to win their 10th consecutive back-to-back -back title. Uh, Newcastle, you just do have quite a good run, by the way. I had the top years. Um, you do win quite a few Premier Leagues. You win a couple of European Cups. Sunderland also do quite well. They play Champions League football regularly. Uh, Sheffield United win a European Cup, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and Chad Evans has nothing to do with that. <laughs> So that's, yeah, let's move swiftly on from this. Because <laughs> uh, the, the problem is that they have struck oil, don't. Uh, um, so this is the, uh, this is the championship. Uh, again, not too much really changes, right? But you know how like every, uh, oh yeah, I know. I know I said not much really changes, but you know how in football, right? Some teams have their day and then there's many years pass and eventually they get their day back again. Now, what happens? The sleeping giants, if you will, of Salisbury, Chelmsford and Vauxhall Motors. They, <laughs> they all come back, my friends. Right. Um, it does only go down to 23 teams. Well, I must apologise for that, right? The 24th, uh, it doesn't quite fit on the screenshot. Now, when we were in Nottingham, uh, obviously Forest are up there at the top. Yeah, right? And, and there was a county fan. I was like, where the hell's Notts County? Went through the whole thing, couldn't find Notts County. Uh, it turns out that they're 24th on the championship. <laughs> but... The best response I got was one Notts County fan after we'd gone through the whole thing. He just went, we fuck off and form a European breakaway Super League. It's <laughs> 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 brilliant, you know, it's better than I thought. I was like, yeah, that's staying in. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so that's the championship there. Um, again, League One, not to, I mean, Banbury obviously come back up. Uh, <laughs> Banbury. <laughs> I did, a, I did a one of the two shows in Banbury and they all just went, all right, champion. <laughs> they didn't care. Uh, Chester come back, uh, Hull, they, they slipped down a wee bit. Southampton, they don't really have a great time. Cambridge, uh, who else we got now? This is League Two. Uh, York haven't bothered fucking moving at all. They just stay there. One place of a relegation for 50 years. <laughs> just go, we're here because we like it. <laughs> Why look up, you know? Uh, wolves, Wolves have gone down, Gainsborough, uh, Histon, Bath, uh, you know, these are big clubs, these are big, big clubs, obviously. Uh, Peterborough, Hartley Pools, uh, Hartley Pools are down there, just just, just below Blackburn, uh, which I'm sure you're quite happy to know about there. Uh, this, the, this is the Blue Square, and um, Brighton are about to drop out of the Blue Square, along with Wigan. Uh, <laughs> And then, and Dave Whelan is still talking about his fucking FA Cup. Uh, <laughs> oh, during the time you got relegated, Dave Whelan, do you remember the time I was in the FA Cup? <laughs> uh, 
Blue Square North again, not really too much difference there. Uh, and then Blue Square South again, fairly sort of similar. And the next slide um, needs a little bit of explaining, as obviously does the rest of all this as well. Uh, when we were in Glasgow, right, I spoke to a guy in the show and I said, what's been your crowning achievement? And he said, well, what I've done is I managed England and took them all the way to the World Cup final and then lost deliberately. And I went... <laughs> <laughs> and I went, why? And he went, because I can't be fucked listening to them still going on for another 30 years. <laughs> So, to be honest, it made him quite happy to look at the, next, at the World Cup uh, tables. Unfortunately, England don't win another World Cup uh, between now and 2058. I mean, the massive giants of Denmark win a World Cup. Serbia win a World Cup. Nigeria, presumably managed by Terebo West, win a World Cup. Also, also, it doesn't fucking go to Qatar. They don't get it. Yeah. Right, it changes hands. Uh, you do, however, England do uh, win three back-to-back -back, uh, European titles, but for many, many years down the line. Uh, so that's quite good. Um, and this next bit, this next bit, again, it's, it's weird to explain, but um, doing this show is kind of like, I know I'm saying the football manager ruining my life, okay, but it has allowed me uh, a few opportunities, which have been quite good and quite fun. Um, one uh, was, was obviously there was a film came out a little while ago, then people saw the film, I was in that quite a lot, that was brilliant. Um, and I never thought that that would actually happen, which is great. And then I went and had a meeting with the guys at Sports Interactive and they said, oh look, what's your next plan after the tour? And I said, I don't know. And they went, would you like to write a book? And I went, what about? And it, like, I, I know, like, oh a crime thriller, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm quite clever, but even at that point, I was like, you're on your own here now, dickhead, right? <laughs> what about? I mean, it was obviously fairly self-explanatory, right? They went, would you like to write a book about going to meet all your top 11 players, right? That would be quite good, wouldn't it? I went, hang on, you want me to go to Freddy Adu and ask him why he's shit, right? <laughs> I don't think he's going to read that interview, personally. Uh, but in the meeting, I then went, ah, how's about this? How's about I go and meet all of my Blythe Spartans players who won the Champions League? Yep. And then they looked back down the table at me and just went, but Tony, they're not real. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, yeah, all right, I'll grab them. But they have got real names, right? And Facebook has a lot of names, right? So what I did was I just put a load of players that I had and just Facebooked a lot of people who had very similar names, right? And I just wrote off them going, all right, you were in me Blind Spartans team. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't want to, like, hang out on that. And, like, talk about the good old days, right? And, uh, you know who's not very nice? A lot of people on Facebook, right? <laughs> In particular, one person I was very upset about, Derek Reynolds, he's about to retire, he's a one-person man, he's a one-person man, one-club man, he's been a legend of the club, he's about to retire, I shed a tear, I'm going, but Derek, 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 come on, you've got to meet up with me. And he goes, no, I'm not a real player. I went, you are, this is what you won, man, right? And I sent them all that. <laughs> And bless him, he wrote back and he went, I think you mean, I think you've got someone else. And I went, oh, it's you, it's you. And eventually he blocked me on Facebook, right? So I'm not allowed to him. Anyway, now, not just Derek Reynolds, though, of course, trying to get more players in. Right? Obviously, Derek was the main man because he was, like I say, he's the heartbeat of the club. Um, Ansel Thomas, who I had to sell to Real Madrid, unfortunately, right? I, uh, I sent him a thing. And you wouldn't think that there was someone called Ansel Thomas on Facebook, but uh, turns out he's about to release his first uh, record at the end of the month. So, you know, fingers crossed, it'll all be good. Uh, so we heard about him. Uh, Johnny Wilson, again, this was a product of the youth system. Uh, a wonderful player. He now plays for Barcelona because, you know, he started fucking yapping on a bit, right? So, right, you know what? Fuck off, right? You know? what, what's that? Is that the, is that the, the, the embers of the Ian Pender shirt outside? Yeah, you're going to follow him, are you? Yeah, right, go on. Get yourself on the easy jet flight, right? So, he went off. Um, three Johnny Wilsons did get back in touch and said that they'd meet up, which, to be honest, I found a little bit creepy and I'm starting to back out now, so... Um, this guy, uh, he's only in here because I couldn't actually find a Jose Miguel Suarez, but he's a lot less bitey than his granddad. Uh, <laughs> 
I want to say there. Um, and there's, there's some screens in the, in the game, obviously, as I've been working along, they've been quite interesting. Um, this one, I remember popping up. Uh, this fella feels we can become good friends. Fuck you, Ian Pender. I see, remember. <laughs> we fell out. Don't you keep saying I'm one of your favourite personnel. I'm not, right? But look at the people he's worked with. Gerard Piquet, uh, Per Coldrop, Luca Toni. I mean, that's, a, that's not a bad squad there. And Carol Merriam as well. So, uh, this fella, however, I will be friends with. I replaced Ian Pender with Andrew Hendry. He'd become a very, very good player and a very, very good manager in the future. Uh, it's, it's, it, uh, yeah, right, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, right? But it's not just me. I promise you, I can promise you it's not just me, okay? Other things that have happened during the shows, right? We were in, we were in Manchester and, and the bloke came up to me after the show and like, imagine all of Oasis at once, right? That's what he was. And he came up and he just went, all right, right? He had the voice and uh, he, he asked me a, the weirdest question I have ever heard after one of these shows. He just came up to me and he went, how much is the most money I ever got for Teddy Lutchich then? And I was, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I don't remember. I remember I used to partner him with Mirel Radoy. That's what I did. That was my centre halves, okay? And he wouldn't just take that. He wouldn't take that at all. He just looked at me and just went, not so much of a fucking expert then, are ya? And just <laughs> gave the Manchester. <laughs> best one, best one was Leicester. Again, after I had the fella who was the, uh, the five years clean. End of the show. Four guys came up to me and said, can we have a quick word? I went, of course you can. They went, all right. What we do is we play second division Belgian clubs. That's our thing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> right. We all go around each other's houses, we sit, we play the second division Belgian clubs. What we decided to do for our lads' holiday was we booked ourselves to go to Belgium to go and visit the stadiums of the teams we managed, to buy shirts of the teams we managed, to watch the teams we manage play and chant for players who don't exist. <laughs> bravo, Leicester lads, bravo. You know, because that's the thing, I thought I had it quite bad. I thought I had it quite bad when we started the tour. I wanted to do the show, uh, not just in comedy clubs and little art centers and theaters and stuff. I also wanted to do it at football clubs because I thought it sort of makes sense. You know, you've got a natural audience base there. And we started the tour at Blythe Spartans, which again, obviously made sense. <laughs> And you know what, right? Blythe Spartans, they don't have a lot of security, okay? So I went down a little bit early and just thought, you know what? You haven't got a statue, have you not? You haven't got a statue? Well, you know what? I will be my own statue until someone moves me. And this is what I did, yeah, all right? So. <laughs> Fucking pointless, I put makeup on everything. <laughs> and then I got a little idea in my head as well, and I remembered that there was another comedian friend of mine doing a show here. So I rang him and said, Oh, are you in Newcastle yet? He went, I am. I said, Oh, get yourself a taxi up to Blythe, and what I'll do is I'll present you on the pitch as a new signing, okay? <laughs> Don't believe me? No, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Well, that was a practice, that was a practice, right? He's just been through it. <laughs> he's jet lagged, he's Brazilian, right? So he's really thinking he's got better on his scout report. Skills. You know what? It's hot, it's hot. It's hot, yeah, it's hot. It's been a long day, but you're tired. Let's get you back inside, we'll get you rubbed down and stuff, and it'll be fine, yeah? Now you'll be alright, Sam. Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> Got to do the high red lap as well, haven't you? Got to do it. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for somebody to turn up. Oh, sorry, boss. Um, I've got someone to be for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've got to get him back now anyway. So, uh, I, yeah, I'll, uh, the, the phone will probably ring and we'll get some more in. I've got to go. You, you really got to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got to go. We've got to go. I'm fine with that. Bless you, bless you, sir. Um, so, uh, yeah, so like I said, I'm happy with the addict thing. Right? I'm totally happy with that. We're going to come towards the end of the show now, where I just need to do one final thing to wrap this up as to what else we think football managers have ruined, okay? We talked a little bit about relationships before. Now, the question, however, was what happened to the woman who I moved back to Newcastle with? Now, some of you in the front row might be quite observant. Notice we actually got married uh, last year, which was lovely, right? Brilliant, really, really nice time. 
thought, you know what, this is surely going to be the only time I'm going to think of a day where I'm not going to think about football manager. My wedding day. Now. Nah. Right? <laughs> can't even do it. Can't even do it, right? One day, I can't even do it, okay? There I was, more than the wedding, okay? I got a phone call from the receptionist at the hotel saying, Tony, there's a little package waiting for you downstairs. You have to come and sign for it. So I went downstairs, and it was a package from uh, Miles and the lads at Sports Interactive, and it had a little note that said, Tony, it's her or us. And you know when you think, well, you know. I've <laughs> <laughs> not had her for 20 years, you know. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't that at all. It was a lovely little thing. They sent me a thing that said, congratulations from the guys who helped contribute to ruining your life. And uh, this is a football manager doormat, by the way, as well. So. Um, now, when I'm sat on the sofa and I've got my laptop on my knees, I've got my own little technical area, which I quite like, so... <laughs> you know, like when I start to like, try and move out, she goes, get back in there. Oh, sorry, love you. So, um, but, um, but she's a big football fan as well. She's a big football fan. That's sort of one of the things that obviously kept us together. Um, and uh, when we were talking about the, the wedding and that, we spoke to the registrar and we said, look, is there anything we can do to sort of like have a little bit of a nod to the fact we're both football fans. And she went, well, what do you mean? And I was like, well, is it possible when we sign the register for me to hold a shirt up and present her as a new signer? <laughs> 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 Apparently it's totally possible. <laughs> All you got to do is ask, right? So, uh, uh, 23, by the way, is, is my is my squad number. That's what I used to wear when I was a player. Uh, uh, so that's always the number that we go with. Um, and this is true, and it's like, it's a strange coincidence. It is a very strange coincidence. We got married on the 18th of the 5th. Now, 23 was obviously for Liverpool was Jamie Carragher. Villa at the time didn't have a number 23. 18, obviously, for Liverpool was Dirk Count. They also had number five for Daniel Agger. That would have been fine. Uh, Villa's number five was Richard Dunn, and number 18 was Emil fucking Heskey. So, <laughs> and us, we went with 23. Uh, and on the day, she said to me, she goes, oh, am I your best sign? And I went, you know, Mark Kerr, are your pet? So, uh, <laughs> So, um, so did football manager actually ruin my life? I think, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm more than happy with that, though. I've, I've come to accept it. It is my life now. It is my life, okay? Like, everything that's done in the last 20 years has built up to this point, okay? Without football manager, none of this would be possible, okay? Like, I won't stop playing. I will not stop playing football manager. I got 15 a couple of weeks ago. Brilliant. And I look at it. It's my Christmas day when that turns up. I'm not going to stop playing until I get a fucking management job out of this, right? And even then, I'm going to use it as a scouting tool. That's what I'm going to do. Because it has, it's let me do some stuff that I never thought was possible, like the film, the tour. Uh, like, hands up, by the way, who went to the end of season league managers awards dinner? Uh, this guy did. Right? Yeah, genuinely, I thought I was going for my Lifetime Achievement Award, right? <laughs> I got to take a piss next to Tony Pulis, best day of my life ever. <laughs> genuinely did. Like, and you know what? Gus Poirier, that's not his real face. Uh, so... <laughs> I know that sentence makes no sense, but makes all the sense at the same time. Uh, and then a little while ago, someone sent me a tweet as well, and they went, oh, uh, there's a lad just turned up in my youth system. I think you might recognise him. Turns out, I'm now in the game as well. Yeah, I mean, I look shit, don't be honest. Uh, like, I presume I've become a better manager than I'm a player. Uh, uh, someone said once, like, oh, why are you playing for Tottenham? I went, because I'm a fucking midfielder, that's why. So I just get stuck at Tottenham. Uh, <laughs> Eventually I'll play for Hull or something. Uh, so, so yeah, so my, my name's now in the database. Now what happens is that obviously there's now a possibility for a generation of, of loads of different Jamesons and stuff. Um, now I spoke to the guys uh, just before the game, the 15 came out recently, and they said that they have to go through quite a rigorous process when they go through the database for what they class as anomalies uh, and problems. Because a few weeks back, apparently, they found a Rolf Harris in the database. So, <laughs> Shipman. Uh, <laughs> lethal finisher, praise on the back of aging defenders. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty.
pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I genuinely think this has been, uh, this uh, it has been probably the, the most fun gig of the tour, to be honest. And it's a homecoming gig and that, so I really do appreciate that you guys have come out. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, I think that there's been a bit of a sort of a link between between football and comedy. I know maybe like a lot of people maybe haven't come to comedy shows before, or certainly haven't seen me before. You know, you've come to see a player that you've never seen before. You need to scout me three times probably for a full report, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, uh, but no, I, I genuinely appreciate you've done that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Round of applause, a massive round of applause to the Stan Comedy Club for helping me put this show on my way. They're massive players, so we drink so much as well. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, take care. See you all very, very soon. All the best, Alan Tony. See you soon. Bye.